All right, welcome back. We're moving on with module one. And right now we're gonna learn how to divide rational numbers. So like always, we're gonna start with our vocabulary. Make sure you pause the video and write these down. You can't solve a problem if you don't know what the vocabulary is asking you to do. So you need to understand what are complex fractions, a fraction where both the numerator and the denominator are fractions. Then we have the dividend, the number being divided. So that'd be the one inside the box. We have the divisor, the number by which the dividend is being divided. So that's the one outside of the box. And then we have the quotient, which is the answer to the problem. So let's go ahead and just write this out a little bit so we can see what that looks like. Um, and I don't have a ton of space, but let's see. We have our dividend. We have our divisor. And we have our quotient. All right, now we're gonna go through the steps for dividing decimal numbers. And again, you're gonna to wanna to press pause and you're gonna to wanna to write this down because there's a lot of information. After we write all this down, then we're gonna apply the steps. So we're gonna see an example next. So this may not make a lot of sense right now because it's just a whole bunch of numbers, but write it down and then we'll go over it. So step number one, multiply the divisor, that outside number, by a power of 10 so that it is a whole number, okay? That divisor cannot be a decimal. So we're gonna multiply by 10 or by 100 or by 1,000 until that decimal is at the very end of the number and it's a whole number. Step two, we have to do the same thing to the dividend. So if I multiply the divisor by 100, I have to multiply the dividend by 100 because we have to keep the, the balance, we have to keep them at that same, you know, what I do to the inside, I have to do to the outside. You gotta be fair to your numbers. So step two is to multiply the dividend by that same power of 10. So 10, 100, 1,000, whatever number you used in step one is the same number you're gonna multiply for step two. Step three, you're gonna place the decimal point on top of the division symbol above the decimal point. You, you wanna keep that all lined up. If it's a whole number, the decimal points at the end. Step four, divide using the same process as you do with whole numbers. And or step four, divide using the same process with whole numbers. And step five, if there's a remainder, add some zeros and continue dividing until there's no remainder. So make sure you press pause and write these steps down. And then we're going to do an example showing all of these steps. So let's go ahead and practice with eight and 64 hundredths divided by two and 25 hundredths. Now I, we need to, step one, we need to multiply the divisor, 2.25, by a power of 10. So 2.25 times 100 is going to get rid of that decimal point. Remember there's two here, so we're gonna do two here. So we have 225 for our divisor. And here's kind of a shortcut. We moved the decimal to point two places because we multiplied it by 100. We're gonna move the decimal point two places in our dividend also. So let's, and again, that would be if we were to multiply it by 100. There's two here, there's two here. So 864. So we're showing you how to do it, but I'm telling you that there's you know a little shortcut. If we move the decimal point two places on the outside number, we're gonna move it two places on the inside number. Now we can just divide. What is, how many times can 225 go into 864? 
uh, I'm going to guess about three. Well, it can't go in eight. It can't go in 86, right? So there's no numbers there. I'm just going to erase those. There's no numbers there. So if 225 times three, three times two is six plus one is seven. Three times two is six. Okay, so we have 675. So we have 189 and 225 can't go into 189, but we can add our decimal point and our zero. Now, how many times can 225 go into 1,890? So let's just kind of think about it for a second. Two can go into 18 nine times, but because 225 is a little bit bigger, I'm gonna say, let's, let's try eight. Okay, so two can go into 18 nine times, but I, I just have a feeling that that's too much. So we're gonna try 225 times eight. Eight times five is 40, eight times two is 16, plus four is 20, eight times two is 16, plus two is 18. Ah, that worked out pretty good. So we have eight. And it says keep dividing until there's not a remainder. So two can go into nine four times. Let's try that. Five times four is 20, four times two is eight, plus two is 10, four times two is eight, plus one is nine. And we have no more remainder. So our answer is, whoops, three and 84 one hundredths. All right. Now we have rules and they're really the same rules that we had for multiplying rational numbers. A positive times a positive equal to positive, but a positive divided by a positive is also gonna be a positive. A negative times a negative makes a positive and a negative divided by a negative makes a positive. A positive divided by a negative is a negative and a negative divided by a positive is also negative. So these are the same rules. We just changed multiplication to division. Now let's practice. So let's set up our problem. We have our dividend. We have our divisor. And we're gonna worry about the negative and the positive later, or we could address it right now. We have a negative divided by a positive. The answer is going to be negative. We know the answer is gonna be negative because a negative divided by a positive equals a negative. But now we gotta find the number. So remember, we gotta move this decimal to make it a whole number. And whatever I do on the outside, I have to do on the inside. So let's take, 45 is now 45.36 is now 4,536. And 0 0.75 is going to be just 75. I don't need a zero in front of it. That's just kind of a weird number. We don't write numbers like that. We needed the zero when there was a decimal point there, but we don't need the zero when it's a whole number. So now 75 can't go into four, 75 can't go into 45 but 75 can go into 453 six times. And let's just do the work. All right, so, oh, really close. 450 and we subtract. You know, I'm really bad about remembering to do step three where we put that decimal point up i i do it i just don't usually do it at step three i do it in step four so 75 cannot go into 36. so we're just going to subtract and bring down a zero but it is important that you put that zero in there because 75 does not go into 36 at all so we're going to do zero times 75 and subtract now 75 
goes into 360, mm, let's say four times, let's try it. Five times four is 20, four times seven is 28, plus two is 30. So I would say that's pretty good. So four times 75 is 300. Now, whew, 75 into 600, I'm gonna say eight. And we can always guess and check on this. And oh, look at that, it's perfect. No remainder. So we're gonna get a negative 60 and 48 hundredths for our answer. All right, let's move on to reciprocals. What is a reciprocal? Okay, so reciprocals are when we flip our number kind of upside down. And this is really gonna come in handy in our next thing when we start dividing fractions. So before we divide fractions, let's review those reciprocals. So a reciprocal of a fraction. Well, let's start with a fraction. So a fraction would be three fifths. The reciprocal becomes five over three. We're not changing it from positive to negative. We're not doing any absolute value stuff. We're not, we're just flipping that fraction. Three over five becomes five over three. But what if I have a whole number? Remember, whole numbers are written over one if we wanna make it a fraction. So, hold on one second. So five equals five over one. Now that I have a fraction, I can create the reciprocal, which is one over five. So a reciprocal does not equal the fraction. It's a completely different number, but we're gonna use that reciprocal when we divide with fractions. So reciprocals are really, really helpful when we start dividing fractions. And then when we have a mixed number, two and three sevenths, we need to change that to a fraction greater than one. So remember seven times two is 14, 14 plus three is 17, the denominator doesn't change. So two and three sevenths equals 17 sevenths, but then the reciprocal of that is seven over 17. So just a, a little review, when we do our, when we start dividing with fractions, we need to know how to make that reciprocal and we're not changing any positive or negative stuff. We're not, we're not doing anything. We're not, we don't want to overcomplicate it. We just need a fraction and we need to flip it. So let's review the steps for dividing fractions. Okay, we rewrite any mixed numbers or whole numbers as fractions greater than one. Then we rewrite the division problem as a multiplication problem using the given dividend multiplied by the reciprocal of the divisor. I'm gonna show you guys this in a second. The important part is that you write down these steps because if we follow these steps, we'll be able to solve any kind of problem. So make sure that you pause the video and write down all the steps. It's gonna be so much, so much more helpful. And then we're going to apply the multiplication rules, okay? Whatever, whatever the steps were for multiplying fractions, which we're gonna review, that all comes into play, okay? I'm gonna just a little bit right here on step two show you what this looks like. Two thirds divided by four fifths. And we're gonna change that to two thirds times five fourths. Whoops. Okay. I still have not figured out why my pen is not working all that great, but that's okay. So, wow, like I look at that and I'm thinking, you know, Miss Osman, you told me that I needed to keep 
they, you know, what I do to the inside, I do to the outside. I have to keep my, I have to be fair to my numbers, but all of a sudden I'm changing division and multiplication and I'm using a different fraction. The reciprocal, but it's still a different fraction. So let me take a second to show you how this works with numbers that we know are correct. Because I don't know that I would look at those fractions and be like, oh yes, of course that's correct. But we all know what 10 divided by five is, right? We all know what 10 divided by five is. It's two, it's super easy. But let's change it to fractions. 10 over one divided by five over one. Now let's follow that same rule that we just saw. We're gonna keep the first fraction the same. We're gonna change division to multiplication and we're gonna flip the second fraction. Five over one becomes one over five. Now we follow the rules for multiplying fractions. We multiply the top numbers together. We multiply the bottom numbers together. And we have 10 over five. And if we reduce that, 10 over five is two. So this was a really complicated way to solve a, a problem we know, right? 10, over, 10 divided by five is two, we know that. But what I wanna show you is that these steps that we just wrote down will work even for more complicated problems. I took a simple problem and showed you all the steps so that now you know, oh, okay, this whole changing division to multiplication and flipping the second fraction to make it a reciprocal, it will create the correct answer because we know 10 divided by five is two. All right, let's try another example. This time it's a little more complicated. We have three fourteenths divided by 11 over 21. So we're going to keep the first fraction the same, change division to multiplication, and flip the second fraction. All right, so now we just need to multiply according to the multiplication rules. All right, three times 21 is 63. And 14 times 11, it's really not one that we're gonna have memorized. So 63 over 154. And I like circling my answers. All right, let's try another one. All right, this time, whoa, it's gonna look really weird. Okay, so we have negative five over 12 sevenths. So this is that complex fraction, right? We, we really haven't seen it since we learned the vocab word but this is a complex fraction. This is like a whole number and a fraction and it's in one big fraction. Let's write this a little differently. Negative five divided by 12 over seven. And then let's change negative five to negative five over one divided by, I mean, I'm gonna, I'll just break down each step, divided by 12 over seven. Now we can change, now we can do the keep change flip thing that we're learning. So we have negative five over one times seven over 12. And now we just multiply negative five times seven and one times Twelve. Okay, so we have negative thirty-five over twelve. Now let's change that back to, or let's change that. Let's try to simplify that a little bit. So we have negative thirty-five over twelve, and let's change it to a mixed number.
12 goes into, oh, sorry, we don't need to add the zero on this one because we're doing a mixed number. Sorry, guys. So we have two and 11 twelfths. So we have two, we have two answers. We have this fraction greater than one, and then we have the mixed number. So it just depends on what it's asking you to do. You might need to know both of them. You might, you might not have to make the mixed number this time, but you also might have to. So just be familiar with how to make both of them. All right, let's move to, I think this is yeah, one more practice before we go into a, just a little bit different topic. So we have negative two and four fifths divided by negative four fifteenths. So another complex fraction. So I don't really like looking at it like this. So I'm going to go ahead and change it to something I'm just a little more comfortable seeing. And then remember step one, we need to change those mixed numbers to fractions bigger than one. So five times two is 10. 10 plus four is 14 over five divided by negative four over 15. And now we're gonna do the keep change flip. Now you could keep the negative at the top or you can keep the negative with the four. I'm just going to keep it with the four and bring negative four down to the bottom. So now we have negative 14 times positive 15. And we have five times negative four. So negative 14 times positive 15 is gonna give us a negative 210. And positive five times negative four is gonna give us a negative 20. And if they both have a zero at the end, we could simplify this. We could just make it negative 21 over negative two. And remember a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So really we have 21 over two, positive. We have positive 21 over two. And I wanna change it to a mixed number. So I have 10 and one half for my mixed number. And it's positive. It's a positive 10 and one half. All right, let's learn dividing rational numbers that are in different forms. So same as multiplying rational numbers in different forms. They need to be in the same form. You can either change them both to fractions or you can change them both to decimals. And sometimes my preference is usually decimals, but sometimes fractions are a little bit easier. So let's try two and 25 hundredths divided by nine fifths. And in this case, let's stick with fractions for right now. So two and 25 hundredths can be written as 22 and 25 over 100 divided by nine fifths. Now I happen to know that 25 over 100 can be reduced. It's, a, it's pretty easy to reduce 25 over 100. They can both be divided by 25. So I have two and one fourth because 25 divided by 25 is one and 100 divided by 25 is four. Now with this smaller fraction, it's pretty easy to change to a mixed number. I mean, this bigger fraction would have been a really big mixed number or um, number greater, fraction greater than one. So now we can change this mixed number to an improper fraction. Just It's just a little bit easier than numbers are smaller. Four times two is eight plus one is nine. So we have nine over four divided by nine over five. 
and we're going to do 9 over 4 times 5 over 9. 9 times 5 is 45. 4 times 9 is 36. Now, this is a fraction greater than 1, so we can change it to a mixed number. So 45 divided by 36. So we get 1 and 9 36. But I also know that 9 and 36 can both be reduced by 9. So I can get 1 and 1 fourth. There is a shortcut to this simplifying part, and I don't want to overcomplicate it. So right now, we, we, we've finished the example of solving, dividing rational numbers by changing them both to fractions. I do want to show you how to simplify before we multiply our fractions. So again, if you are not sure, just stick with what we've got in orange. I'm going to just show like an extra step here in blue. And I call this cross simplifying. So we have 9 over 4 times 5 over 9. It only works with multiplying fractions, but I look across. I look, can I simplify these two numbers? Yes, I can. 9 can go into 9 one time and nine can go into nine one time. Then I look at my other cross, can four and five be reduced and they cannot. So we're back to one over four times five over one. And we get one times five is five, four times one is four. And now I can change that to one and one fourth. So it's just a way of simplifying the numbers before we multiply them, before we get our answer, and before we change our fraction greater than one into a mixed number. But we don't have to cross simplify. If that step bothers you, if you don't like that, that's okay. You don't have to do it. You can follow all these orange steps. Um, option. I'm just going to put optional. Okay, you can kind of veer off and do that cross simplifying, or you can go the normal route and multiply like normal and then reduce like normal. It's okay to do either one of them. But if you're going to cross simplify, just make sure you follow it correctly. Um, otherwise, you might you know, make a little mistake. Now let's try to solve that same problem, but this time we are going to solve it using decimals. Okay, so two and 25 hundredths divided by nine fifths. Let's change nine fifths into a decimal. All right, so we get 1.8. So 2.25 divided by 1.8. Let's set up our division, 2.25. You guys are probably saying, that's awesome, and you wrote it wrong. Divided by 1.8. And I really like this example because the last couple dividing problems that we had with decimals they both had two numbers after the decimal point. The, the divisor and the dividend both had two numbers. This one only has one number in the divisor. So this is only going to get moved one time, and this is only going to get moved one time. We're allowed to have a decimal point in the, divi in the dividend. We're just not allowed to have it in the divisor. So when we rewrite our problem, it's going to be 18 into 22.5. So 22.5 divided by 18. 
we don't always have to move it two times. And I think our first two examples only showed it being moved two times. So I really like that this one shows it only getting moved once. And 18 goes into 22 one time. Eighteen goes into forty-five. I'm going to say two times. Eighteen times two is thirty-six. And eighteen goes into ninety. Well, let's try five times. And that's exactly 90. So we get 1.25, which is the same as one and one half or one and one quarter, right? The when we did the fraction, it was one and one over four, and 25 is the same as one fourth. So we got the same answer. This one's just written as a decimal. Now we have our last problem, our real world connection. Rayana worked for eight and a quarter hours. She earned a total of $94.05. How much did she make each hour? So we have to take what we earned and divide it by the number of hours that she worked. So 94 and five cents or five hundredths divided by eight and one fourth. Now, I kind of like the decimal way. If the fraction is not one of those repeating decimal fractions, if it's a repeating decimal fraction, it's definitely better to change them both to fractions. But if it's a simple fraction, like one fourth, then I think it's easier to use the decimal way. But that's just me. You are more than welcome to solve it any way you want. So let's change one fourth to a decimal. Let me erase that because I wrote that weird. There we go. All right, so we have 94 and five hundredths divided by 8.25. So now let's set up the division. We have 94 and five hundredths divided by eight and 25 hundredths. And again, we're going back to, they both have two decimal, two numbers after the decimal point. So we're moving them twice. But again, it really only matters what is in the divisor. So we've got 825 into 9,405. So 825 can't go into 9, can't go into 94, but it can go into 940 one time. And it can go into 1,155 also one time. And then 825 can go into 3,300 Hold on one second, guys. All right, so let's say four. I feel like I've made a mistake here, but I'm trying to figure out what I did. Okay. All right, so let's try eight to five times four. Let's make sure. Eight, nine, 10, 32, 33. So 
we have a lot she made eleven dollars and forty cents per hour all right that's it for 1.04 make sure you've got great notes make sure you watch this video more than one time it takes a little bit more for it to sink in so really practice 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 this stuff is the foundation for all the future math courses that you're going to have to take algebra geometry all that stuff you really need to be good with fractions and decimals and these last few lessons have really had a lot of practice in that so go ahead and practice and work on your assignments and have a fantastic day